This says I want the limit as x approaches 1, what does that little plus mean? Right side. From the right side of this expression. I'm still going to do the same first step. What is my first step that I do? Not yet. What's the first step, first strategy for finding a limit? That's not the first strategy. Find the asymptote. You all are thinking too hard. You actually have a note card that says strategies for finding limits. That's the title of it. Some of my students do table of contents for the note cards. That helps too. Substitution. Substitution. Nobody said that. It's strategies for finding limits. The first step is to substitute. So what are we substituting in? One. one. When you plug in a one, what are you going to get? Three. You're going to get one over zero, right? That's a no-no. And that is a no-no. Very good. So let's talk about the implications of that no-no. Thank you. Omar, he caught up with us. Good job, boy. He found it. Okay. There you go. All right. What are the implications of a no-no situation? More work? Not quite the more work. But the first thing I need you to know is what it means graphically. Graphically, and by meaning no, it is a non-zero number over zero. Yeah, it's like I have 1 over 0, 1 is a non-zero number over 0. Okay? Graphically, there is a vertical asymptote. That was the visual that Mr. Giroux was giving us over there, vertical asymptote. Okay? From that vertical asymptote, around vertical asymptotes, if you have a graph of vertical asymptotes, you know the graph has to be either increasing without bound or decreasing without bound. Or both increasing on both sides, the conductor graph. Or both decreasing. Back to the conductor graph. Like yeah. Either way, though. Or, yeah, my wish wish. Yeah. Anytime we have a no situation, that's a vertical asymptote, and something was going to infinity. The question is can you figure out the type of infinity? Was it going up to infinity or was it going down to infinity? When you're doing it from one side, there is a way to check. How? Without a calculator. Okay. And again, the vertical asymptote happens when you have the no situation, a non-zero number over zero. Because what does zero over zero give us on the graph? Zero. Uh, on the graph, okay. what does zero over zero give us? A uh hole. -huh. A uh hole, -huh. thank you. You remember? Because that made us do more work. It just did. You remember? All right, so how do we figure this out? A no Pick a test number. Pick a little to the right of one. A little to the right of one. Give you a number a little bit to the right of one. Just a little bit. A little bit. 1.1. 1. 1.1. 1. 1. That's a little bit to the right. 1.99. Okay. 1.99, that's good, but I want a little bit to the right. The reason I do that is in case there's more than one vertical asymptote, I don't want to jump over the other one. So you stay pretty close to your test number. Okay? All right. So we're good? So when you pick a number a little bit to the left of 1, 1.1, 1 .1, plug it in. The top is a positive 1. I'm just looking at the sign now. It's our GN. The top is positive. If you plug in a 1.1, will the answer at the bottom be positive or negative? Positive. Since I have a positive over a positive, guess which direction it's going? Positive. It's going to positive infinity. This works when you get the no situation. Okay? When you get the no situation. I will pick a number a little to the left. A little to the left. So let's do number 10, since I was asking. Let's do number 10. Okay. Positive infinity. Because you already know it doesn't exist. You're just trying to be a little more specific about its non-existence. Which way was it going to not exist, if that makes sense to you? We're going to look at number 10. We've done number 1. We're going to do number 10. 
we have 1 over 5 minus x, and we're approaching 5 from the where? From the negative. From the left. What do we do first? Substitution. Substitution. What happens when you plug a 5 in there? What do you get? Zero. 1 over 0, which is a? No-no. Since it's a no-no, what did you know graphically is happening? Vertical asymptote. There's a vertical asymptote somewhere in that graph. So that means my function is approaching that asymptote. Is it going up towards it or is it going down towards it? So now we've got to figure that out. The numerator is a positive 1. So I know that that part will be positive. What number you want to pick? What number are you wanting to pick here? To the left of 5. It's whatever number. A little bit to the left. 4.9. I like that. 4.9. What happens when you do 5 minus 4.9? It's a positive. It's a positive. So where were we going on this one? Positive infinity. Positive infinity. I know I'm writing equal. Technically it doesn't equal infinity, but that's the best I can do for now. Look at number 2. Does it tell you either left or right? Are you going to get a no situation? Are you still going to get a no situation for this one? Yeah. You're going to get 1 over 0, right? Yeah. So let's check them both. Let's check the left first, and then let's check the right. Because if one gives me negative infinity and the other gives me positive infinity, then you would just write does not exist, because you can't write both infinities. Does that make sense what I'm saying? So we're going to check both of them. Pick a number a little to the left of negative 3. That would be to the right. Negative 3.1 is to the left. Remember, when you're negative, the numbers go the other way. Negative 3.1. Remember, draw a number line if you have to. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. If I want to the left of that, it's going to be like negative 3.1. So if I put negative 3.1 in there, plus 3, what kind of number will that give me? A negative. A negative. Y'all with me? But I got to. Did I hear no? Okay. The number that was a test number was negative 3.1. So if you put negative 3.1 in the bottom, plus 3, you're going to get a negative 0.1, right? Mm -hmm. But you got to square it, so what's going to happen to the answer? Positive. It will be positive. So I've got a positive at the top, positive at the bottom. So what is the left side going to? Positive infinity. Positive infinity. Give me a number a little to the right. 2.9. Negative 2.9. So if you plug in negative 2.9, what kind of answer are you going to get to here? Positive. 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 positive, and you square it, it's still going to be what? Positive. positive. Man, these are all positive infinity. In this case, since the left and the right both gave me positive infinity, we can say that this one goes to positive infinity. Again, if the infinities had been different, one going to positive infinity, one going to negative infinity, then that would be does not exist. Now let's work smart, not hard. I went through the left and the right, but I can look at this and tell it was going to positive infinity. Why? Because the denominator was squared. I don't care what number I put in there. When I square that number, what kind of answer am I going to get at the bottom? Positive. positive. So whether I do left or right, I know this is positive. And that's working smart, not hard. I wanted you to know why. But now that you know why, just go through the process. I mean, just look at the square and you'll know it's positive. So now, so this three is positive or nine is positive. You got it. Unless something like this were to happen. On the top of the negative. Top negative, or they pull a negative on the outside, then yeah. You have to be careful. Alright. So you're going to finish these, and if you will, flip down a little bit, please. These are old. For number five, the part you're concerned with is this part, because that is the part that's going to give you a problem when you start looking at it. Okay? Scroll down a little more, please. All of this looks like a review, correct? Mm -hmm. Nope. Kinda. Kinda. Okay? Because you're going to keep going and finish it. It should be two pages. Is it two pages?